What up, Cancers? It's Shani, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Cancers, Sun, Moon, and Rising for March 2020. This is your reading, dolls. Oh, doesn't want to shuffle. It's like stiff, like it wants me to give you cards already. But we will shuffle a little bit and just wish you guys the best. Sending positive vibes, positive intentions, all kind of good, loving vibrations your way as we are in the middle of Pisces season, March 2020. So sun is in Pisces and we have a full moon tomorrow. Roundabouts. It is the 7th of March, so the full moon will be in Virgo. Very powerful. It's been a lot of energies, you know, ebbing and flowing and a lot of cool kind of, you know, experiences from people I've talked to that reminds me of like the Pisces persona, I think, the traits that a lot of us Pisces energies can relate to. The fact that, you know, there is going to be days where we feel like we're swimming upward and we're making some great strides, you know, and then some times in which we're going to be set back with those old patterns or just feelings of anxiety or remorse, resentment, or just energies that surface and kind of, you know, want us to swim downward toward the bottom of the pond and be melancholy and woe is me. Oh, there's your first card, guys. Put that there. So we'll stop and we'll get you some more, get you four more. And I feel like, you know, if we can just have said it, it's kind of redundant, but if we could just ride these waves out like a surfboard, or um, I said the other day, if we can have to jump on to a life raft, like acknowledge that, jump on and don't feel guilty, ask for help just to ride these waves and to endure all of this kind of emotional deep down in the Mariana Trench type of energies and get through a lot of anxious, you know, moments, you know, get through, you know, your own uh, negative self-talk or battles within your own head that, you know, when you come to the conclusion later, you know, that just are, you know, not doing any good because what we should battle are, you know, the feelings of, you know, self degradation that come in the form of other people. But we also spend time and energy. I feel, you know, um, when we are human beings, um, of, giving our own self based on those other people we grew up with perhaps or in the midst around us lately or at present that do put off these, you know, programmed, um, negative kind of, um, self imposed projections of who you are or, you know, um, put downs. I feel like, you know, we can absorb that. And so we can be feeling, giving ourselves some self, um, you know, talk that's negative because of what we've been told. And also, even if we haven't been told, sometimes I, I've talked to several people throughout my life where they've had nothing but positivity brought to them, but all of a sudden a point in their life, something either went wrong or they're having this moment of self-reflection and they themselves are now, you know, the one, the only ones that are putting this negativity, like I can't do it. I'm good for nothing, or I'm never going to make it things like that. I'm ugly, whatever into their head. So I really want to say is just, you know, Pisces season for sure is all about both extremes, both welcoming, you know, um, elation, happiness, excitement, uh, you know, exuberance, and also welcoming those melancholic, sad, dreary, woe is me. I'm just going to, you know, lay hair flopping like a fish in a puddle type of thing. It's like all about gaining control and putting um, the work into making it in the middle grounds, just making it so we don't, you know, um, go too high. and We don't go too low. We just enjoy and accept and make friends with the valleys, make friends with the peaks. So guys, I'm going to give you four more cards. Then we'll get that bonus card after one, two, three, Ooh, one stick Four cancers. Sun, Moon, and Rising for March 2020, number 34, gorgeous, door to personal healing and happiness. Cancer, I feel like you guys have exactly what I just explained under control. I feel like at least you are aware of it, and that is a personal mantra that at least when your, you know, heart, soul, and mind does go to, you know, um, a place that doesn't make you feel comfortable, whether that's anxiety or whether that is sadness or whether that is just feeling uncomfortable, um, in some sort of way, I feel like you, at least you're, you're acknowledging that strength within you, within your self to 
you know, realize the truth that the door to personal happiness and healing is to not get suffocated and stay in those, you know, phases too long of negative self-talk, or at least to move forward with what you are entitled to, which is knowing the truth about yourself, which is you are a divine, beautiful creature. You affect so many people with your loving, nurturing vibes. You open the door for other people's healing and happiness. So take that into account and say to yourself, you yourself deserve to, you know, re retract that and reciprocate that energy right back to your own soul. So I feel like the door to personal happiness and healing for you is wide open. It's for you to whenever you see fit to venture out, come back and regroup, venture out, come back and regroup. I feel like you're knowing though, right now that a big, big piece of the pie is with, you know, personal healing and happiness is to understand and not get too bogged down or self defeated. Your understanding of the fact that, you know what, there's going to be days. Mama said there'll be days like this, right? There'll be days like this. My mama said, right? It's going to come. Peaks and valleys are going to come. It'll be okay. Number 13, financial constraints. Perhaps just like, I um, mean, you know, a lot of us, it is extremely tough out there right now trying to get by. It's like the Bay Area is psychotic where we live with no rent control. And I see people all the time, you know, that I, I used to know some of them have great jobs or living in hotels or homeless. Um, I did that myself, lived in a hotel for months in between, you know, leases. It's, it's, really really difficult for people to make it in so many ways all over the globe of course in various degrees and i feel like if there's anything that is you know weighing you down is you know a financial constraint maybe you thought you might get some money from the taxes and you didn't or maybe you know it just is really hard for you to even make ends meet and you don't know where the money's going to come from for the next bill I feel like the door to personal healing and happiness isn't to say, fuck it. I don't know what it's, where it's going to come and I'm not going to worry about it at all. It's just going to come not to be like that, but to be like, if I worry about it and freak out how much more, you know, insanely negative and sad and horribly burdenous is it going to be, you know, the whole time leading up to what I owe and the financial constraint um, or the problem. If I took away that worry, how much more energy could I give then to creating a solution for the problem? Right, guys? Number 44, a woman holding a heart. So this is like asking you to look toward other people who may be um, a woman, maybe of just divine feminine energy that they project and, you know, let them, whoever they are in your family, maybe your child, maybe somebody um, that you you know, like to watch on TV or somebody who you listen to podcasts, something like that, a YouTuber, maybe it's me, maybe it is somebody, just somebody who is of divine feminine energy, feminine energy, like that empathic nurturing quality that is offering you some of their food for thought, some of their heart, some of their wisdom, some of their love, take it. You know, it's, it's hard to accept or admit that people are vulnerable, but I try to do that more and more and I'm pushing myself to do that more and more. As a healer, I always want people to know that I feel like it would be a, a falsity for me to say that I know exactly how to remain content and aligned and centered and happy at all times. I feel like, no, when we have the skills to practice that, we may even do it in the beginning a little, in the end, the majority of the time. I feel like it is even, you know, um, master gurus. It is something that they will remind you that, you know, it is still, we are still all walking the earth as flesh and blood. So we still are going to have these insecurities. We're going to have to ask or accept love and help when we fall short of it ourselves, because we either get stuck in old patterns or we're just going through, you know, that reflection or different kind of motions, traumatic situations, etc. So I feel like if you are able to, you know, open up to any kind of friend, um, whether it be, you know, family or otherwise, or person who you look up to mentor, even like I said, on TV, I kept on getting like a flash of Oprah Winfrey, maybe watch some, 
YouTube videos, which are awesome, that Oprah has had about having people on like Eckhart Tolle and, and people that um, Abraham Hicks, she has explored a lot of spiritual topics or positive affirmation or mindfulness topics, things like that. Um, motivational, you know, positive speakers like she's had uh, Tony Robbins. There's just a cool, you know, um, range of videos you can find now on YouTube. Um, if you can't find them on TV, that will really like align with you and you'll find that you'll get love and you'll have some answers and messages that, you know, maybe you didn't even know that your heart wanted to soak up and you will soak them up. That's my advice. Number 36, the second chakra, Archangel Ariel. Okay. This is talking about our, you know, sometimes this is talking about our ability or inability to feel comfortable with intimacy and to feel like we are able to project our sensual, you know, style or our intimacy or be comfortable with. Sometimes I feel like I get this card recently where if somebody is maybe just numb because they were um, taken advantage of maybe in a physical way or maybe they just are uncomfortable with themselves, they are insecure um, with, you know, their body or their sexuality or something and they just have not, um, cancers, they have not been able to tell themselves that it'll be okay in the partner's eyes that, you know, they're sense of fear of intimacy or uncomfortable with being touched or things like that is really something that needs to be worked on, um, just internally healed and really, really focused on. And I think that that leads in with this card, but the, the door to, you know, personal healing and happiness is to find that point in you to whatever point you want to, that is secure with intimacy and exchanging you know, um, intimate sentiments, whether it be verbal or, you know, touching or things like that. Bonus card. Number five bonus card is angel of balance. Nice. 48. That seems to be a theme of course for Pisces season, all these readings in a private reading It's talking about balance. And I feel like, um, you know, the two fish that symbolize Pisces, one swims up, one swims down. It is always the important role in my life as a Pisces to find the middle ground where I swim straight. <laughs> I can swim fast and I can swim as crazy and jump up like a dolphin and do tricks, but I feel like it's imperative to find a, a balance. So this is what this card speaks of absolute, you know, um, a care for balancing, you know, the anxiety that we have over financial worries with, you know, what exactly in life is imperative. I know it's horrible to be poor, not to make ends meet and to support your family, but which means more to you if, you know, God or whomever is going to come down today and say, you want your kid or you want, you want your lover or you want your mom or you want your relative, whoever you love, you want your partner or do you want, you know, this material item? Do you want money? It's like, everybody's going to pick their family. Everybody's going to pick what is not material. I mean, hopefully if they're not, you know, dark energy. So I feel like the angel of balance comes to you as a bonus and says, you know, that's the key. That's the message for you. Cancers is balancing and just knowing that, you know what, it's okay. If you have all of these kind of insecurities, maybe a sense of, um, uncomfortability with intimacy in some way, or somebody else has that toward you. If you are feeling like stressed out about finances or worried about the world stage, what's happening, I feel like balancing out, you know, all of these principles of like mindfulness and emotion, you know, and all that, I feel like also finding a balance and a truth within yourself that it does take you dipping into that old pattern and that dark, you know, potentially toxic way of thinking for you to go back to the light. So the balance is always there kind of like a, a level, like, you know, those construction levels and the bubble goes in the middle. I feel like it's okay if it tips one way or the other. It's okay. Just finding the balance back again. Like it's all about, I was telling my girlfriend, shout out cancer, lovely, lovely lady. Um, it's all about the bounce back. It's all about the recovery. It's all about coming back and resetting regeneration, regenerate crabs. Just like I always say about you guys, crabs in, in nature, the real crabs, the animal, they are able to grow back limbs because they regenerate. And this is going to be your 
message out of Woven Dreams and Blessings. It's my DIY deck. And I'm going to pull out a message for you guys. Cancer, Sun, Moon, or Rising. For your fellow brethren, water sign season of Pisces season 2020. March, I hope you have a non-tumultuous full moon experience. It's been kind of uh, up and down, so I hope so. I'm feeling great now, but you never know. Crazy occurrences and surprise happenings all the time. But to you guys, I wish you nothing but blessings, love, and light. And interesting. You have the card Martyrdom. Martyrdom. It's like, like that's a Pisces thing. Water sign thing, I think. Cancers, you can, you can dig this. So, martyrdom. Self-sacrificing through duty where service can lead to enlightenment. Help and serve for the right reasons. Your acts of devotion, protection, providence, and dependability are honorable. Never played up as a victim while on duty, though. Right? Beautiful. Martyrdom. So, if you want to sacrifice and go down for your cause, when you're doing it, don't act like it's be like me preaching about LGBTQ movement and then, you know, going, whoa, it's me. Why do I get so much hate about this? Right. It's like saying, hey, look, if you're going to go for it and sacrifice, you know, and really put yourself in and be like, I believe in this cause or this so much. If I'm going to devote, protect, you know, and be dependable and honorable over a subject, we can't feel like the victim when the pain starts to fall in. So self-sacrifice through duty, guys, and service, as we know, um, many of the you know, um, spiritual philosophers of past and present feel like that is a part of spiritual awakening is giving and not even telling anybody that you're doing something and just giving and being fulfilled and devoted in what you're doing for your own soul and no one else. So cancers, I bless you. I thank you for everything that you are. I wish you a very healthy and safe and happy rest of Pisces seasons. Can see cancer moon, Cancer Sun and Cancer Rising. Blessings, guys.